Hi everybody, welcome to my channel Frugalissima. My name's Sam and this is where I talk about all things sewing. Today it's day number 72 of 100 days of sewing and I've got a quick bias binding tutorial for you for going around a v-neck. So like the one that I'm wearing here. So these are just going to be quick videos and with a quick tutorial. I'll just give you a bit of background as to what this blouse is. This is the ruffle sleeve top by In The Folds, which is available freely online from Peppermint Magazine. It goes up to a 51 and a half inch bust and I've made size D. This tutorial came about because I didn't have enough fabric to make the facings. So I actually came up with a method to apply bias binding around the neck. So I'll show you the finished product and what it's like on the inside. If you're familiar with quilting, it's very similar to a quilting technique and it just gives you a nice inside and a nice neat outside. This is just an old sheet that I've been using and you can see here my iron protested but it just gives you a nice neat finish and it enables you to be able to apply bias binding to a v-neck. So if you remember the ruffle dress and top that I made a couple of days ago and that had a centre seam, if you don't like a centre seam like some people have said then that allows you to omit that centre seam and actually cut in the fabric on the fold. For this tutorial I'm just using one and a half inch bias binding that I've made myself. I've got a tutorial for making continuous bias binding and it's just folded in half. So we don't need any fancy gadgets like this. I'm just folding in half and it's just a time saver and a money saver for you. So yeah, it's a, it's a great way of eking out fabric. I made this top out of just a metre of fabric instead of one and a half metres. So it's a good way of getting more out of your fabric and you know, no specialist equipment needed as well. So on to today's video. Measure your neckline all the way around. If you measure with your tape measure stood up like this, it gives you a bit more of an accurate measurement. I make that 26 inches, which is about 66 centimetres. You need to add a couple of extra inches because you're going to be folding your bias bind in here at the V and you just need a little bit to cross over here at the back as well. Ideally, you need to stay stitch this V because it's cut on the bias. That will give it some stability. So once you've measured around your neckline, you want to stay stitch at around an eighth of an inch and then you want to come in, marking tools, and you want to mark your sewing line, which is a quarter of an inch, just around that V, not all the way around. Just mark it so that it crosses over at the point. So just go beyond the markings. And then you're going to go from the point of the V through that mark in there and mark down there. And that's just so you can see what you're doing once your work is under your sewing machine. Then you want to take your bias binding, which is the measurement of your neckline plus a couple of inches. And the amount that you need will depend on the width of your bias binding. So I've got an inch and a half here. And that just gives me a little bit more of a generous turnover. If you only use an inch, Depending on your fabric, you'll only have a very narrow bit that turns over. So I'm not using any fancy tools here, I'm just using bias binding folded in half, wrong sides together. I'm not using a bias machine or anything like that, I'm just folding the bias binding in half and you can see when I, when I pull on it, it stretches ever so slightly. So flip over your work, you're going to start pinning all the way around. You're going raw edges to raw edges, start at the back, fold over your bias binding by about three eighths of an inch, maybe a centimetre, something like that. The fold wants to go on top as you're looking at it, just pin that. Pin all the way around until you get to the V and then I'll come back. Okay, so I'm at the V now. Just put a pin in perpendicular just so that we can see what we're doing. And you're going to pull your bias binding back towards the direction in which you came. And you're going to make that fold line up with that line that you drew down there. So it just goes like that. You can finger press it if you like. And then you're coming back up here. And you're just going to make sure that that new fold is in line with the fold of the bias binding on there. So fold it back, make sure it's in line with this line here and then fold it back up. And you're coming back up here, lining it up as well. Just need to make sure that that fold is just nice and in line with that fold there. And you can bob another pin in 
at that side. And then you're going to carry on pinning all the way around and back to the back. But essentially what you're going to what you're doing here is creating a nice flap so that when you turn it through it's got room. And you might be familiar with this if you're a quilter. I think you do this as tomato corners as a quilter. And before you go any further, what you want to do is just mark a line in line with that, and this is why you need to come down a bit further. Mark a line in line with that V at that side. That's where you're going to sew to. You're going to stop sewing there, and at the same at this side. You need to mark a line in here. So you're going to mark a line. So that those lines run down in line with that line there. So continue pinning until the back. All right, so I've finished pinning all the way around and I'm just at the back here and back to where we started. And I'm just going to overlap that bit that we folded. You take that original pin out now and you can just snip that down. Your excess, you don't need that. So now I'm going to go to the machine and I'm going to sew at a quarter of an inch all the way around. And what we're going to do is, we're going to start sewing at the back, come all the way around, all the way down here. Stop sewing here where the first line is, back stitch, lift your needle, come back in, start sewing again here, back stitch, all the way around to the back where we started and we're going to be sewing at a quarter of an inch and then I'll come back and show you what to do next. I'm approaching the place where I'm going to be stopping now so I'm just going to slowly come up to that show you what to do. So stop sewing, back stitch, just cut your thread. And go back in, hopefully you can see that line there. I'm going to start back there again without catching where we've sewn here. Back stitch and then continue to sew all the way around. We're just approaching the back centre seam now where we started and we just need to sew over the top of that and back stitch again. Right, so this is what it should look like after you finish stitching, quarter of an inch, right sides together and what we're going to do now is just snip into the bodice, right into that V. So flip your work the other way around and then you're just going to snip up to that stitching, just on the bodice, not on the bias binding. Now what you're going to do is go to the iron, you're going to press all these seam allowances up like that towards the bias binding, away from the bodice. I'm going to press them all up like that and then you're going to flip it all back over to the wrong side like that, including this little pleat that you've made. That will come back over as well. You can do that all in one pressing and it'll all look a little bit odd, but with a little bit of manipulation and our favorite work for nagling, we'll get that to sit nice and neatly there and it should end up looking like that once you've pressed it. And then you're going to come back and top stitch it all down. You can trim these seam allowances if you like, because I've used a, an inch and a half bias binding and only a quarter of an inch seam allowance, you can leave them in. It just gives it a bit of an extra strength. But it's up to you. Okay, so this is what it looks like all pressed. Got a nice and neat finish there at the V and at the back the end is covered over by that fold that you made so it's nice and neat there. And then from the right side you've got a nice gentle V there and you can go in and pin that if you like, I'm not going to bother. I'm going to then from the wrong side I'm going to top stitch. So I'm going to start at the back, I'm going to top stitch all the way around as close to the edge as I can, pivoting at the V there and then coming back all the way around again. And that's it, we're finished. Okay, so we're just approaching that V now, so I'll just show you what to do. Just holding it down with this all so I don't get my fingers in the way. It's not really needed. So 
just keep sewing until you get to the line of the V. So I can just see it approaching now and then you're just going to lift your foot, turn your work and sew up the other side. So you don't need to take your work out. Okay, so that's it all done, top stitch. So you've got a nice neat V there and on the inside you've got nice neat insides. Obviously I'm using contrast bias binding and thread so that you can see what I've been doing. Just need a final press and uh, I've just made a mess with my iron pressing it and obviously using contrast thread and bias binding you're seeing it more but if you use the same fabric for the bias binding that if you use for your top then you'll not see that at all but quite I quite like it like that. So I hope you found that useful. There are many ways of finishing the back. Uh, that's just the simplest way without messing about too much. And there are different ways of making bias binding. You can use purchase bias binding as well, but I thought I'd just use this as a demonstration of using what you've got without actually going out and buying any specialist equipment. So that's it from me today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I usually bring out videos on a Friday with Frugal Fridays. Midweek I usually have hints and tips and techniques. And then on Sunday, I usually do plans, makes and reviews. Thank you very much for watching. I shall speak to you later. Bye.